Hey everybody, this is Carl with Trial Byte Studios. And this is Josh. And today we, uh, this is going to be kind of a more freeform discussion, conversation type thing. Uh, we want to start doing not necessarily a podcast, but more like a group discussion with uh, myself and Josh and everybody in the comments. Uh, and just about various topics, it can be anything, but, you know, relating to biology and paleontology, um, mostly those topics. So, with this topic, we were gonna tackle something that has plagued, uh, the paleontology community and paleontologists for, what, like, 20 years now? Yeah, I Longer believe, than that? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Uh, so, we're gonna discuss whether or not Nanotyrannus was its own species. Now, I'm kind of in the camp, I don't know, I, I, I've seen evidence for both both sides and uh, it's up in the air for me uh josh on the other hand uh i do believe it was its own species um there's some evidence that kind of goes towards that but also like carl said there is evidence of it being a juvenile of a tyrannosaurus rex right so this is this is going to kind of be a, a change carl's mind on this because i am to me it just seems really redundant to have that many large medium and small and small size carnivores in the same environment in you know in hell creek all at the same time yeah i understand that but if you look at uh say the african savanna you have the lion as a top predator you have a leopard as a medium and you have the cheetah as kind of its smaller you know basin right and that's just in the field of cats for example uh, but also in Africa, you have jackals and hyenas and all this other stuff. So it makes sense for a healthy ecosystem to have multiple uh, types of carnivores. Oh, and if it, the body plan fits, it works. Sure. You know? I, and I totally agree with that. Absolutely. Because that, that's that's niche partitioning, right? That's resource partitioning. We, yeah, exactly. That's a, that's a biology thing where if, if the environment it has enough uh, resources to support each of these predators in their own niche then yeah it can happen but you know to me we don't really know what well, we do know how uh, resource rich uh, the hell creek formation was and it was very resource rich lots of lots of animals lots of different animals um but again it just it, it's one of those things where it's like why would we have because we have you know species of dromaeosaur which got to ridiculous sizes like dakota raptor which, but, yeah, but again, like I said, you have to look at the what type of environment they're living in. If you're going to be hunting some type of prey, like say again, lions with, to buffalo, you're not going to put um, you know, the small house cat against a giant cow. Yeah, but that that's what I'm saying is if it's competing with other drone, if it, if Nanotyrannus was a species, and it was competing with other uh, medium-sized carnivores at the time. There, there's a problem there because with with niche partitioning and resource resource partitioning you run into a problem where if there's two different species that are competing for resources essentially the one that's better will will you know will do that role better and therefore they'll they'll survive and 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 continue to to live on but so so my question is like what you know what were the dromaeosaurs hunting obviously and then what was nano tyrannus hunting if it was a species to to keep it from hunting the same thing as those larger dromaeosaurs well my and this is totally my guess but yeah, yeah, uh, we're my, not scientists we're just discussing well this like i said just totally my guess i'm assuming that the uh dakota raptor would probably be going more after the orthon uh struthium and stuff like that while nano tyrannus was probably more of the hadrosaur hunter okay um, and then you have, of course, T-Rex that has that big 10,000 pound bite pressure, uh, that's going for Triceratops and Ankylosaurs because it has to get through that armor. That's what, you know, the giant jaws and bone crushing power is for. Yeah, sure. So that, but then again, that doesn't really answer my question of what was, what was Nano Tyrannus hunting specifically? Well, you said the, what, like Hadrosaurs? Yeah, that'd be a uh, Montosaurus. But how, how, well, I'm, I'm looking up now, but uh, we don't really know the size of Nano Tyrannus. Um, I mean, there's speculation. Was that like six meters, which is what, uh, six times three, 20, 20 feet? So it's, um, it's like 20 feet. Sorry, we're, we're not European. <laughs> no meters, only feet. 
Yeah, that's what happens when America decided to use uh, a different measuring <laughs> system. So, so why would it? You know, and and hadrosaurs are obviously a lot bigger than than the nano tyrannosaurus. But then again, you know, uh, it's speculated that Tyrannosaurus rex and and other large theropods went for prey that was a lot bigger than themselves. But generally, uh, when when you get away from that top predator niche, like like a lion or like Tyrannosaurus rex, the the prey items that the that predators go for start to become smaller and smaller because there's that risk ro- risk reward ratio. Yeah. Like if it doesn't. Well, that's like in any uh, co- uh, ecological uh, environment, you have, for example, in, in the United States, we have wolves and bison. Right. I mean, a wolf is no bit so uh, just we, a slightly large dog. Are we suggesting that Nano Terrain is hunted in packs now? <laughs> <laughs> No, um, <laughs> I don't. I don't believe that. No, uh, no neither do I. No. I mean, there probably was a family group uh, setting when you had babies um, for a while, but I don't think their parenting structure was that closely <laughs> to mammals at all. No, I, I don't think so either. Um, okay, yeah, I, I could see that. Um, again, it, it gets into the risk reward ra- ratio and then it really comes down to how resource rich the the Hell Creek formation was and do we know that it was rich enough to support such a great amount of biodiversity like the like Africa. Like we know now that Africa and Egypt specifically during uh, the Cretaceous was incredibly rich in resources. That's why we had things like Spinosaurus. Well, now we know that Spinosaurus was really more of a um Fish an, an aquatic uh, top predator and Carcharodontosaurus was on you know was the terrestrial predator but again you still have a lot of biodiversity there so i guess the question of biodiversity and uh, resource partitioning comes down to was hell creek uh rich enough to support it and the answer there is yes right yeah, yeah. I, I would assume uh our fossil intake of not just species but the number of species or of that particular species has been quite large i mean triceratops for example is the number one uh fossil that really comes out of the hell creek yeah and you know we have god knows how many specimens of that in all stages of life right so okay that that's that's the one question that's always really bothered me about nano tyrannus and could it be its own taxon and is it is it its own species is that whole idea of of resource partitioning uh, because this is something we talked about in my biology classes a lot, you know, with resource partitioning, niche partitioning, and when you have two species, like, uh, I don't two similar species that are competing over those same resources, that's when you get, you know, species die off. Because well, one is gonna, uh, one is gonna outcompete the other. That's actually a good point, because, uh, recently, um, we've noticed that a group of mountain lions, I think out west, uh, population actually st- kind of uh start falling off mm-hmm. and that's because wolves are starting to move back into those areas oh so they're competing, so for, the they're same competing for the same uh food and in a healthy population you're not going to have a large number of one and not the other right uh so it if we go back to the hell creek uh formation um we can see that you know there are a lot of different biodiversities different niches so if a mid-sized tyrannosaur was to exist at the same time as t-rex right it would totally not be unplausible yeah it's not unplausible it's um probably more likely however because of the similarities to their body structure to a young tyrannosaur right it, it's very easy to get them confused well and that's something i wanted to talk about as well is the body structure because what you know it, again if if we're in resource partitioning and we're talking and i can't get off this yet we're, i swear to god we'll move on <laughs> but um if if it is you know if it is there and it's competing with other uh medium-sized carnivores like dakota raptor um what makes it better at what is it what makes it better at competing for those same resources because it, it's got the tyrannosaur body plan which we all know that the tyrannosaur body plan it, it, it works they're, they're boxers right they're they're supposed they're, they well, get not, not really because uh 
towards the Creta- end of the Cretaceous, the Tyrannosaurus kind of went into two different categories. Right, that's true. You had the T-Rex that was the big, heavy-duty uh, top boxer, yeah. as you were going. And then you had something like an Albertosaurus, which was the sleeker runner um, type uh, Tyrannosaurus. That's so true. It was more... Most likely, Nano Tyrannus might have been the last leg of the Albertosaur line. I, c- I could see while that. While T Rex was the last of the, I'm going to bite you and you ain't going anywhere. Sure, yeah. Okay. So it I was could kind of, you know, like I was saying, it's the lion versus the cheetah right. uh, type aspect. Um, now, there, there's been some compelling evidence that, that came out that we actually just watched in preparation for this discussion. Yeah, it was a uh, Discovery Channel, uh, I think, called Dinosaur Hunters. Yes. Where they they found a nano tyrannus species, or they say they found a nano that they, they say they found a, a nano tyrannus, and they noticed uh, differences. So let's let's well before we get before we say this, let's let's move on from the environment and the resource partitioning. Let's just assume that the environment was uh, rich enough to support multiple medium sized predators, which well, I'm I'm not entirely. Against. If you actually uh, before we actually move on, yeah, the environment was very much similar to what uh the lower parts of like the everglades in florida is okay it's um somewhat marshy uh open area um and stuff like it's a very okavango yeah and central yeah. florida type so, area so just very it, it's very resource rich yeah which okay so we've established that you know it, it's plausible that there that we could have two medium-sized well, not just medium, two tyrannosaurs. Yeah, two tyrannosaurs uh, competing, or not competing over the same resources, but at least in the same area. So then that brings us to the the evidence that we had started talking about, which was the uh, the they found differences in not only the morphology but the actual characteristics of the animal, where they they found a um, they found the brain cavity of Nano Tyrannus, and the they noticed that the inner ear was built differently yeah uh the inner ear uh, of a ty- nano tyrannus actually held its head more at a uh, slight angle looking downward kind of like how you know how some kids walk around where their heads kind of looks more towards the ground instead of in front of them so it has that slight angle to it uh where a t-rex inner ear it's literally focused straight on uh, yeah, straight ahead it, kind of like a big freaking arrow <laughs> yeah it's built to make the the to keep the animal level when its head is parallel to the ground which i totally understand but at the same time you know we uh, we recently just had uh kittens or well we didn't have them but my cat recently had kittens <laughs> i hope you did <laughs> <laughs> and um my cat recently had kittens and you know as they grow up i look at them and it's like and, and okay let me preface this by saying i really don't like jack horner I, I don't like him as a uh, I, I think he's a I think he's a really well established paleontologist but he I, I just don't like Jack Horner anyway that that's that's well, not the that's, point you know there's reasons and uh, yeah. spe- things around why you know so, he has his own opinions but uh, that's not really the discussion we're yeah, having that, Carl. That, that's not the point <laughs> but what I'm saying is as I noticed the kittens growing up they went through different stages where it's like if that were to die and only its skeleton remain i'd be like that's an otter <laughs> like that's not a cat that that's a that's a that's not a that's well, not a kitten it's a, I, I, it's I get otter. your i get your analogy but you have to remember all animals go through a certain uh child phase yeah, I guess. yeah it, every... and so if you look at the structure of you know of a small child to an adult there's bound to be differences there's going to be uh skull differences and uh, you're kind of making my point for me However, <laughs> as I, um, before you decide to uh, try to stick me with a fork here, um, I don't think the inner e- your inner ear would change how you would position your head and your whole uh, physique just by getting older. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but then again, you know, humans, their inner ear develops as they grow as well. And it changes how we orient our bodies because when you're a baby, obviously you can't really stand up; you have to lay, right? But when you're an adult, you, you're not laying down that much. You're standing up more than you're laying down. So when but that's because our bones aren't uh, fully, you know. Yeah, exactly, formed yet. exactly. But the the point is that inner ear, the inner ear structure in most animals changes as they grow, and that was the same with the kittens. When the kittens were little, 
they they couldn't really hold their heads up you know it was more downward until they until also, they grew up you have to get build your up your muscles to actually help you with that right but that that's not really the point the point is that the inner ear of most species changes as it grows and so i don't really find that evidence that compelling because i could believe that nano tyrannus or that a juvenile t-rex went through stages where maybe it did hold its head at a slightly different angle and then as it matured and as it grew into the the uh the you know the the monster that it, it is or not really monster but then it would you know bring its head up level um the the more compelling piece of evidence that came out of that show for me was the fact that nano tyrannus actually possessed longer arms yeah, or, or, that, or the the juvenile t-rex possessed longer arms than the adult yeah uh that one's kind of hard for someone to say you know it's not a new species <laughs> yeah uh, but that one's getting that one, me because your arms do not shrink <laughs> when you get bigger <laughs> and, and i mean uh if anything you know bones get bigger when you get bigger not you know the opposite way around <laughs> right and then you know i was also thinking about uh just because i wanted to argue this point more i guess i was trying to think about other species of animals that lose traits as they get older um but i really couldn't think of any instances where you know a species just straight up gets sh i guess adult you know human humans do sort of get smaller as they get older, but that's because of spinal compression. That's not really because the yeah, bones Yeah, that's because of gravity shrunk. and everything else. <laughs> that's not because, you know, I'm melting! Yeah, so that that evidence for me was was really compelling, and I actually hadn't watched the show yet uh, until today, where and we saw the clip. And, but uh, again, it's... It, but then they presented evidence for the other side where they would they took a nanotyrannus and... Uh, they looked at the fossilized cells, which is actually kind of amazing that we have the technology to do that now. Um, but they looked at the fossilized cells and noticed that the cells were still growing, the, the, that the specimen, specimen wasn't fully grown yet. So then that led a lot of paleontologists to just automatically jump to the conclusion that, oh, this has to be a juvenile T-Rex because the cells are still growing. Yeah, uh, I understand your point, but when it's only five uh, so-called nano tyrannus is on the books right um you're going to need a lot more evidence than just hey look there's a uh possible you know growth uh ring here that says it may still be a young animal because even if it's still a young animal it doesn't mean it's still a, a t-rex or a nano tyrannus sure and i think that's kind of what this whole argument boils down to is we just don't have enough evidence yet yeah, most likely uh, we're going to need probably about as many uh, nano tyrannus specimens as we have T-Rex right now. Right. Now, and we found juvenile T-Rexes, but, well, but we've never really found one in the stage where it would be the size of a nano tyrannus. The thing is, when, when you call, uh, say, you know, a, a juvenile tyrannosaurus, I mean, even the biggest T-Rex we have not are fully put together. Yeah. So... You know how big did these things really get is... right do, do we know if they actually got a lot bigger yeah and may, mean... maybe nano tyrannus was you know and maybe the ones that we found are actually juvenile nano tyrannus and maybe maybe they grew up a little bigger you know slightly bigger like what, what are we thinking like the regular size uh, the ones that we found are around 20 feet so i don't know to like 25 feet something um, like that to make it maybe. the medium sized carnivore yeah. you know and uh, that actually makes a lot of sense to me, especially with that, because we know that Daco Dakota Raptor did not get that big. No, Dakota Raptor probably looked a man in the eyes, and that was it. Right, and so what would we we would estimate Nano Tyrannus would be like ten feet tall, twenty five feet long. Yeah, something like that. That's pretty on par with other medium sized carnivores that we see throughout the rest of the world at this time. Yeah. Like Carnotaurus and uh, Albertosaurus, Gorgosaurus, right? <laughs> the The list goes on and yeah. on. Um, so I think that's pretty compelling as well. If if we, I think that 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 the evidence that uh, the cells were still growing that well, remember, might these, actually but, uh, these uh, animals are also um, in line with uh, reptiles and birds, right? Well, a crocodile will pretty much continue growing its entire life true yes they max out at certain feats but there's also a lot of um you know environmental pressures so yeah to say 
you know how big a uh, saltwater crocodile from the wild and in captivity can get can get or it, you know it's basically no comparison yeah so that in i was gonna say i think that the evidence that the nano tyrannus was still grow or that the the bones that they examined of the of allegedly nano tyrannus were still growing is actually better evidence for nano tyrannus than it is for it being a juvenile t-rex because if if it the the specimens that we found are about the size of the other medium sized uh, carnivores in the area, yeah. which means you'd have a lot of them competing. Now, if Nano Tyrannus were still growing into you know its full size, then it can start going after other prey, and we get back into that uh, argument of resource partitioning. What was this animal going after? Why was it, and why was it not competing with the rest of the medium sized carnivores in the area? Well, like I said, um... So I think it's better evidence, actually, and I'm starting to kind of get behind <laughs> Nano Tyrannus now. Yeah, um, like I said, Nano Tyrannus was probably the go-getter for, uh, Montosaurus, uh, while, t like I said, T-Rex is probably eating the Triceratops and Ankylosaurus in the area. Um, just from the look of the medium to large carnivore thing, as we were discussing, uh, it's definitely in that you know, mid-sized predator range that we normally would see in a healthy ecosystem. Right, because, with, and it's funny, without Nano Tyrannus, what are the other medium-sized carnivores in Hell Creek? Uh, as far as I'm aware of, none. <laughs> exactly, so and if we look at an environment like um, like South America during the Cretaceous, we have, uh, oh shoot, it, it, we have the... Uh, I know uh, Carnotaurus. We have Carnotaurus, but there, there's, there's one... There's a bigger one. Oh my uh, god. Gigantosaurus? Or Maposaurus? No. Because those are both super predators. Oh my god, I can't believe I, I can't believe I'm drawing a blank. Um South American. Yes, he is Googling this as we I talk. I am literally Googling this as we talk, guys. But uh I can't think I, I, I literally just watched something on it too. Where um Bellosaurus? <laughs> I mean, there, there's a lot. <laughs> there so. is a lot, but uh what what my point is that uh, in South America we see a medium-sized and then a large-sized carnivore, and, and well, it's not just you know in the Hell Creek formation as you were saying. Literally any uh, dinosaur formation in, across the world in both uh, the Jurassic and Cretaceous time periods, you see you know that super predator on top of right. the ecosystem. Then you have the medium predators underneath that eating. Right. And then you have smaller carnivores under that. Mm -hmm. And in, if you remember in your third grade science class, yes, we're going back to third grade here. Yeah. Um, a healthy food web or food chain yep. is built like that. that it, and that's, that's, and that's what we see in not only in the modern world, but also, as you said, like in the paleontological world, where if you look in all these different places, you're, you're finding large size, medium size, small size, and there, there might be. And depending on how resource rich that environment is, you might even find multiple species uh, in the same role, but not necessarily in the same niche. Yeah. So I think that that's actually pretty compelling evidence for the existence of Nano Tyrannus. I came into this argument, or not argument, but I came into this discussion more on the skeptical side of, well, I, I just, I wasn't really buying it because it seems so logical to look at this and see the features and know that you know everything that that grows up goes through a juvenile stage and it changes as it gets older but now you know that i'm looking at it with the new evidence that's been found and with the new evidence that and with the the, the discussion we've had about me you know environments and ecosystems and the different roles animals play in that I, i'm really starting to get in uh, in the nano tyrannus camp which is not good <laughs> Well, it's good for us, yeah, you know, because uh, you're, you're uh, now seeing ha a more natural view of the area instead of a filtered lens, right. as some people do. Well, I, I, I don't even think it was a filtered lens because I was thinking about it as a biologist because I was thinking about if we if we take Nano Tyrannus as at the size it is that or that we've found it, then it makes absolutely no sense as an animal. Because it's basically the same size as a, as Dakota Raptor, and the other medium-sized theropods and and carnivores in Hell Creek. So it's like, why are there so many of these, 
and why aren't the how are you competing with these other obviously better built well, uh there are uh, carnivores going after the same resources well, and that's like that I was said, my logic um or as you said with the whole growth thing well, we don't really know how big some of these animals got. Exactly, and that's why. I mean, and that's so, why. And with only five nano tyrannus, uh, quote labeled, right? And yes, I did air quotes there. Um, <laughs> we can't really say uh, for certain if they were even nano tyrannus to begin with. Exactly. I mean, when you uh, look at uh, cats' skeletal features. Mm -hmm. um, they all kind of look the same yeah <laughs> so it's not too hard to see why the people or scientists uh would label it as a juvenile t-rex or a nano tyrant well the thing is and back to jack horner i hate jack horner <laughs> yes but, we know this. but back to jack horner he was really the first one to kind of come forward with that theory before then it was in the pale in the paleontology world it was like, oh, you found a new species. Oh, it doesn't match anything that we've got. Okay, it must be a new species. Well, yeah, because and then he comes along. Yeah, well, his research in bastard <laughs> young triceratops kind of helped that, prove that. Yeah, and young triceratops definitely did help prove that. And now we know that they went through a stage. But with the two pieces of really compelling argument, or really compelling arguments for me that have actually changed my mind on this subject, um, is the fact that. The, the species of alleged nano tyrannus that they found, uh, the cells that they looked at were still growing. So that means it would grow up to a larger size, which means it can now take on a, diff a different uh, niche in the environment. And then secondly, is that whole thing about their arms being longer than a full grown tyrannosaur or tyrannosaurus rex. Yeah. Because it's well, not even uh, only that, the arms weren't just longer. But also the claw, their finger claws yeah, the, were much bigger. The claws than the were also claws bigger of a t uh, full-grown T-Rex, and you're you're going to try to tell me that not only did they shrink, <laughs> I mean really? Yeah, that <laughs> last time I checked, fingers don't shrink when you get bigger. That that, but then again, there are some animals that actually do lose limbs and lose uh, features as they mature. But as far as we know, uh, Tyrannosaurus didn't. Uh, as far as we're aware, yeah. Yeah, as far as we're as far as we're aware, Tyrannosaurus didn't, and that's the those are the two pieces of evidence for me that really have made me flip sides on this argument. Um, so you're saying I won? <laughs> I'm not saying you won, but I'm saying as a discussion, this was a good scientific discussion because now, uh, since we since we kind of bounced ideas back and forth, you know, I can think about it with different points of views and different perspectives. Yeah, now if only an uh, actual paleontologist could do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true but uh i think that's gonna about wrap it up is is there anything else you wanted to add um, I'm, I'm good no i think we i pretty much covered everything uh in this discussion yeah so uh if anybody else wants to jump into the discussion please do so in the comments down below yes please do <laughs> uh let us know what you think do you think that nano tyrannus was its own species or are you in the jack horner camp uh, and if you are, then just, <laughs> you know, I still like you, but we need to talk about our relationship. You know, um, <laughs> Carl, I think our next discussion should be why you hate Jack Hunter so much. <laughs> because, damn. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like. And again, uh, join in the discussion and we'll try to respond to as many of you as we can in the comments down below. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. This has been Carl and Josh with Trilobite Studios. And we'll see you next time. Bye.